A couple of versions ago in Blender 4.2, we got thin film interference, but it only worked on dielectrics. So no anodized metals, which was a bummer because that's one of the more common real world uses of the effect. However, Blender 5.0 added proper thin film support directly on metallic shaders. I made a quick video then showing this new functionality, but I didn't go into specifics about determining exact anodized colors. Unlike a regular shader, thin film interference doesn't let you just type in RGB values. Instead, it asks for a physical thickness of the oxide layer in nanometers. But it turns out real-world anodizers don't think in nanometers either, they think in voltage. If you hook a titanium part up to a power supply, crank up the voltage, then the oxide layer on the metal grows at a very predictable rate, roughly 1.62 nanometers per volt. So if we look at one of my color charts here, you can see at the bottom it says 75 volts, 122 nanometers. That's the exact voltage a machinist would dial in to get the rich yellow gold color on real titanium. Since Blender expects nanometers, that's what we use. Today, I'm going to give you the full cheat sheet, 11 color bands with the precise voltage and nanometer values you can type straight into Blender's thin film thickness variable to get predictable colors. Here's a quick rundown of how it actually works in a factory or a workshop. The raw titanium part is submerged in an electrolyte bath using phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid. The part is connected to the positive terminal of a power supply, and it becomes the anode. That's why it's called anodizing. A controlled DC voltage is applied between the part and a negatively charged cathode in the bath. That voltage drives oxygen ions into the surface of the metal, growing a transparent oxide layer at a very predictable rate. For titanium, which uses type 2 anodizing, the oxide grows roughly at 1.62 nanometers per volt applied. So, 30 volts equals about 49 nanometers in thickness for the oxide, which is a deep blue. 75 volts is about 122 nanometers of thickness for the oxide, which makes a rich yellow gold, and so on. And for titanium, the index of refraction we use is 2.46. Even though this is precisely tuned to titanium, it's a generally good value for metals when you want to produce that richly saturated thin film colors appearance. So just use it as a general for any metals that you want. Let's take a look at a blender file before we jump in and look at the color charts. I have three different materials on each of my anodized products here, these flashlights, but they're all being driven by a core metallic BSDF. So this could be the metallic BSDF, but this also works perfectly fine on the principled BSDF in metallic mode. So let's come in and take a look at this. So let's go into edit the group. Now don't worry, I've got both uh, the metallic BSDF and F82 tint mode, which is what the principled BSDF uses. And I've also tested this in physical conductor mode using a titanium set of complex IOR values. And the values work the same. There is a little bit of visual difference between the two, but they're pretty much the same. So you can just use it in F82 tint mode for ease. And as part of that ease, you can just type in the thickness values. But you're going to know over here that I actually have set up a very simple node setup where I can take the anodizing voltage and put it into a math node where we multiply it by that 1.62 value, 1.26 nanometers per volt, and that's what I'm driving into thickness. But you can just as easily come over here and put in the actual thickness that I've got in the charts. So let's start down at the low voltage end. Here we have the bronze brown values going from 17 volts up to about 22 volts. And you can see how that changes the coloration. But of course, you can just type in the nanometer equivalents. Now let's take a look at the next color range. The next range is what I called navy blue. And we go from 28 volts or 45 nanometers up to about 35 volts or 57 nanometers. Now it's interesting because you can see how some of these have a really interesting and beautiful mix of colors. They're not necessarily going to be a uniform color across the surface. The next range is what I call the yellow golds. And we start at 70 volts and go up to about 82 volts 
or 113 nanometers up to about 133 nanometers. And it's interesting that you're going to note that there's a big jump between the previous one and this one in terms of voltage. The voltage difference going from about about 35 volts up to 70 volts is just because of the way the physics works out with the interference is that you actually get almost no color in between these. And so the thin film interference disappears to almost a neutral color in between those two ranges. Then the next set starts at 88 volts or 143 nanometers, and we have the pink magentas. And you can see how those kind of play out. And we end up with 96 volts or about 156 nanometers for your input value in Blender. Then going up to 103 volts or 165 nanometers, up to 108 volts or 156 nanometers, we have the electric royal blue colors. Then at 113 volts or 183 nanometers, up to about 118 volts and 191 nanometers, we have the teal cyan blues. Next, we come to another set of really interesting colors, the cyan greens. We go from 120 volts or 194 nanometers up to 130 volts or 211 nanometers. This is a really striking set of colors to me. Then we transition to the yellow-green lime colors. So from 131 volts or 212 nanometers up to about 140 volts and 227 nanometers. Then we go up to what I call the rose gold colors. From 146 volts or 237 nanometers up to about 152 volts and 246 nanometers. And then we go into what I call forest greens. 186 volts or 301 nanometers up to 195 volts or 316 nanometers. Now for the final color range, we have the one oddball in the group. And it's what I call reddish. So you'll notice that we didn't really have any good solid like canary reds. And that just simply has to do with the physics of thin film interference. The longer wavelengths for the reds, it turns out just don't produce a good solid red. So we can actually kind of simulate it using a couple of different ways. In the real world, they actually use a different anodizing process in order to get this. They'll use some dyes and some other hacks in order to get a really good vibrant red. But if we want to do this in Blender, let's jump over and take a look at this. Let's jump in, edit my group here. Now, in order to do it, you actually have to do something for the first time. You have to introduce a base color. So far, if you noticed in when we looked at this the first time, the base color was just a very thin, light gray. So it was basically just no saturation. It was basically just a very thin, light gray, something like that. And that was the basis for all of the metals. But for this red, you actually need to introduce this. So what you have to do is you have to drop the anodizing voltage to about 90 to 100. The nanometers per voltage stays the same, but the IOR needs to be dropped down to help prevent excessive saturation on top of excessive saturation. This is just what I found to work in case you need something like more of a red anodized metal. 